He witnessed hell. Just a kid in a global war, dodging bullets and bombs. Lucky guy. And yet, on an early morning at John F. Kennedy International Airport, a man who survived hell feels anxiety about a tribute. Oh, I was on edge. I, in fact, I, I think I slept about three hours. Something special is happening at JetBlue's Gate 8. Oh, oh. What a phenomenal day. What a phenomenal opportunity for us to honor our veterans. It's called the Honor Our Heroes flight. Please keep your seatbelts fastened. And it's the reason Ken Johnson, a World War II Navy veteran and Pratt & Whitney retiree, is joining other veterans on a sentimental journey provided by JetBlue. Together, the group will spend the day at the World War II Museum in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm a little nervous. Still am a little nervous. <laughs> the Connecticut resident says he's humbled by all this attention. I felt like a celebrity in a sense. Even somewhat mystified that he was chosen. He'll say, what did I do? But history remembers it differently, fighting Axis powers and preserving a nation's freedom. And I'm really grateful for this opportunity from Pratt & Whitney and Jet Blue. It really makes me feel good. To all the members of the Navy on every battlefront, we salute you. Anchors away, my boys. Anchors away. The day filled with heartwarming surprises. It's better than winning the lotto. Surprises that spark a sea of memories, enough to carry an entire naval fleet. And the first wave came rushing back the moment he stepped off the bus, his eyes on the famous Higgins boat. Ken served on this craft as a gunner's mate on June 6, 1944, D-Day. How about the troops you were dropping off though? How did, you, how did they uh, get God, they were 18, 18 year old kids. How did they get off the boat? They got off the boat and I said, go find a hole, I saw them. Get out, get out of line of fire. It's easy to say that, you know, but you got to say something, you know. Right. Hearing his stories and hearing uh, his memory being jogged by the things that he sees around him. It was a hell of a day, you know. It's an experience I'll never forget. And when those stories got going, other invited Pratt & Whitney guests stood, transfixed, lost in Ken's vivid memories. A lot of gunfire, a lot of explosions. A couple of ships uh, hit a mine and went down. There was too much going on. Too much going on. Was, you look over there, you'd see shells coming in, exploding in the water. I guess I wished I was somewhere else. A different time, a different place, but 71 years later, I salute you, sir. he is back. And at every turn, whether it's staring at a donated Wasp engine or Sherman tank, there is a story to tell, even a story to swap with a World War II vet. What we had to do was uh, watch out for the Kamikazes. And Okinawa, we walked into Okinawa, southern part of the island, that's where they were. We lost more people there than any other action there was. Even in war, there are moments of levity, and Ken was able to relive that as well. With a nostalgic slow dance with the museum's victory bells. He got a kiss, too. They were fun. They, they're, they're outgoing, very outgoing girls. With the day almost complete, the anxiety of the morning has washed away for this Navy man. JetBlue ensured veterans would leave feeling valued, and honored. It brought back another time. But, uh, and your mind starts wondering because you start remembering. That's what it does. It reminds you. It remembers different things that you didn't think about. When the war started, Ken Johnson was just a kid. He's now nearing 90 with a different perspective. The boy who dodged bullets has grown into a man, someone who made history happen so our future could be bright. You know, you go around this world one time, and you've got to grab a better bit of gusto you can grab. It's a key thing in my life, you know, at this late day. I really, I feel lucky.